Curious John here, and today I'm curious about interstellar space travel. I want to know how real is it, and how likely are we to really get to the stars? I researched it, and here's what I found out. We're used to seeing it like this, and this, and this. But as of today, none of these ways work. That's because in reality, space is immense, possibly even infinite. Our nearest star system is many trillions of miles away. So far, mankind's attempts to travel between the stars are a complete bust. But here's the cool thing. Scientists take the problem seriously, and they're seriously working on it. The idea used by the creators of Star Trek turns out to be one of the more interesting ideas. In Star Trek, they use warp drive to get between the stars. Warp drive is faster than light travel, where the spaceship is inside a warp bubble that contains nothing, not even space, and the universe moves around it. The concept was first used all the way back in 1931 by science fiction author John Campbell Jr., who used it in a really goofy sci-fi novel called Islands in Space. The book was generally panned, but John Campbell Jr. became a very influential person in the sci-fi world as editor of Astounding Science Fiction magazine. That means his ideas stuck around, and in fact he was still an important figure at the time Star Trek was created. So his idea of warp drive worked its way into Star Trek and became part of our popular culture. Now here's where it starts getting really cool. In 1994, a physicist named Michael Alcubierre created mathematical formulas that proved that warp drive could be possible. According to his formulas, it was possible to create a warp bubble around a spacecraft that would create a complete vacuum, including a vacuum in space. Instead, the space in front of the aircraft would contract, and the space behind the aircraft would expand, propelling the craft at faster than light speeds. The craft would essentially take itself outside of space, with space moving by rapidly around it. But these formulas didn't solve all the problems. Two of the major problems are the amount of energy required to do this, and second, the amount of hawking radiation that spills off from the process. There was so much radiation, it would kill anyone inside the bubble. So while these formulas are interesting, nobody thought it would go anywhere. That's why the world was stunned in 2012 when NASA physicist Harold White announced that he had figured out a way to solve these problems and was trying to work on an actual working warp drive. White's ideas are really exciting. What he did is reshape the warp bubble into something more the shape of a warp donut. And by doing that, it reduces the amount of power required and greatly reduces the amount of radiation it throws off. He admits he's still very far away from having a working warp drive, but somebody else has now stepped into the picture that has figured out a completely different way to get us to our nearest star in about 20 years. This is world-class physicist Stephen Hawking. The limit that confronts us now is the great void between us and the stars. But now we can transcend it. With light beams, light sails, and the lightest spacecraft ever built, we can launch a mission to Alpha Centauri within a generation. Hawking and billionaire Yuri Miller put up $100 million to seed this new idea. The basic idea is this. Instead of sending people across the stars, send little teeny nanocraft across the stars at about 30% the speed of light so they can get there in just about 20 years. Our nearest star system is Alpha Centauri, which is 4.3 light years away. That's trillions and trillions of miles, which would take, using today's technology, about 40,000 years to get there. But these nanocraft are going to be about the size of a credit card or maybe even as small as a postage stamp. They'll have photon sails that will be hit by lasers from Earth, which will drive them up to 30% the speed of light, and thus incredibly reduce the amount of time it takes to get to our nearest star system. Imagine these little nanocraft traveling across the vastness of interstellar space, witnessing sights we've never seen and sending all that data back to us. Based on research from Hubble and other space telescopes, 
We know that the Alpha Centauri stars have planets around them. What will our little probes find as they survey these planets? What information will they send back in just a few decades time to tell us what's out there? And who, if anyone, will detect our little craft passing through their star system? The $100 million put into this project is just seed money. Both Hawking and Milner predict it'll take about a billion dollars to actually meet all the technical challenges required to actually get this project off the ground. They also think it'll take about a generation to do it, but they're very confident that it's very doable. That means within our lifetimes, or maybe those of our children, we'll actually have spacecraft reaching out and entering new star systems. I can't wait to see what they find. Until next time, this is Curious John, and thanks for stopping by.